Hello everyone, I'm Jeffrey Snook Cosgrave, and this is the misrepresentation of beef in plant-based protein research. Where's the beef? Other than being of superior flavor and palatability, beef has many other advantages over less traditional protein options. However, these advantages may be lost in current public opinion and mainstream disinformation. Plant-based protein options are being produced and marketed like never before, often with the idea that consuming these products helps reduce the consumer's waistband and carbon footprint. There seems to be a target on the back of cattle products and other animal products traditionally found on the market. The rise of plant-based protein. Plant-based protein alternatives are storming the market anywhere from the grocery store to the fast food restaurant you pass on your way home. There are many different options and varieties of these plant-based protein options. Here is an example of a plant-based burger. What does the research say? Plant-based protein options are surging onto our grocery store shelves with absurd claims of similar nutrition plans as traditional animal-based protein sources. Producers of these plant-based protein options are able to sway data and research in their favor, often in very convincing ways. A study that I believe demonstrates this is Saget et al. In this paper, the researchers are trying to compare a protein source derived from pea plants to beef. However, instead of directly comparing the two protein sources, they compare two different balls. One is a meatball made of beef. The other is a ball made from pea protein. Saget et al. The comparison the researchers give between the two products really allows the pea protein ball to be appeared to be the superior protein option. The researchers do specify that they are comparing 100 gram amounts of each ball to each other. However, the researchers fail to specify the ingredients of either ball other than the originating source of the main protein component in the balls. Pea ball versus meatball. The researchers do specify the protein content of each ball per 100 grams. The beef meatball containing 17.5 grams of protein and the pea protein ball containing 22.33 grams of protein. On paper, stated in a way such as this, it would appear that pea protein packs more protein per gram than beef. However, I believe this conclusion is only possible because the researchers are comparing two balls with an unknown ingredient list to deceive the reader. What does the USDA say? The USDA states that the protein content in 100 grams of peas is 8 grams of protein. The USDA states that the protein content in 100 grams of ground beef, that would be 85% lean, 15% fat, is 25.9 grams of protein. As you can see, this comparison is a little bit different between the comparison we saw with our balls. Is this a fair comparison? Essentially, the researchers are not comparing apple to apples, but instead are making a comparison that provides results that are favorable to pea protein balls, not the truth. They're comparing oranges to apples, not apples to apples. Sonison et al. The researchers of Saget et al. attempt to cover up their obvious bias by claiming to compare digestible protein amounts of each ball. The researchers claim to compare digestible protein amounts of each ball in accordance with Sonison et al., but I have found that not to be the case. Sonison et al. compares multiple protein sources from chicken, pork, bread, and pea soup to find out the true digestibility and digestible protein content of each product. Ironically, Sonison et al. chose to admit beef as nutrition values were so high it skewed their data. A direct quote from them, we exclude beef since the values were so high between 424 and 463%, which complicated the analysis of the different approaches. Sonison et al. even praised animal products in their research paper for their inherent nutritional advantage. Here's a direct quote. This is the result of the higher digestibility and more beneficial amino acid profile of animal products. The transparency that Saget et al. is trying to portray is easily overseen with the careless and atrocious misrepresentation of their data. They claim to work in accordance with Sonison et al. 
to provide a comparison on digestible protein content of the food products, but failed to do so in a practical manner. Sonnison et al. made specific aim to include the value animal products bring in terms of digestibility and amino acid profiles. However, Saget et al. failed to discuss this comparison at all when comparing pea protein balls to beef meatballs. Saget et al. actually failed to ever discuss amino acids in the paper a single time. Despite having cited the World Health Organization's protein and amino acid requirements in humans' nutrition paper. Again, is this a fair comparison? Another issue with the research done by Saget et al. is the deliberate choice to compare pea protein balls to beef Swedish meatballs. This comparison was done in order to compare the most palatable and nutrient dense form of pea protein to a relatively non-homogenous Swedish meatball made from beef. The USDA states that 100 grams of ground beef, again, 85% lean, 15% fat, contains 25.9 grams of protein. This value alone would put beef over the pea protein ball in terms of protein content, not to mention digestibility and amino acid profile. Saga et al. deliberately chose to compare a value added beef product with a less with less of a nutrition plane compared to standard ground beef. This is not a fair comparison. This is not apples to apples. This comparison was made because it allowed pea protein to appear to be the better protein source. Another paper compared balls of different protein sources with a more transparent ingredient list. Thyron compared meatballs made with beef, pork, onions, breadcrumbs, and eggs to pea balls that were made with pea protein, rapeseed oil, potatoes, onion, and oat bran. The meatballs containing 14 grams of protein per 100 grams, and the pea balls containing just 11 grams of protein per 100 grams. With a transparent approach, it is easy to see that balls containing animal products not only provide more protein, but are also derived from a more natural and less processed ingredient list. Are plant-based protein options healthier? A big issue that is overlooked in the production and sale of plant-based protein alternatives is that these products are often heavily processed and contain ingredients that are not normally found in the household pantry. This could be a huge food safety concern that is often overlooked by the health and environmentally conscious consumer whom is often the purchaser of these plant-based protein alternatives. Highly processed foods. According to Witzel et al., consumers that are in the market for plant-based proteins still want these plant-based proteins to have a simple ingredient list. Clark and Bogdan explore the need for a simple ingredient list in plant-based proteins more in depth and found that consumers tend to be wary of plant protein sources due to high levels of sodium and higher degree of processing of plant-based protein sources. An interesting finding as, these, as the same paper states that people tend to choose plant-based protein options when looking for healthier alternatives and have weight loss in mind. Clark and Bogdan also mentioned that less processed plant protein sources such as canned beans and tofu are preferred over more processed foods such as veggie burgers and meatless chicken products. An interesting note from Clark and Bogdan is that plant-based protein sources are still believed to be more expensive and thus less available in comparable amounts to the less processed meat products that are available. Saget et al. also listed price as a concern most consumers have about plant-based protein alternatives. Food safety concerns and processed plant-based proteins. With the large amount of processing that goes into manufacturing plant-based protein alternatives, is it valid to be concerned? Food safety of processed foods. Siri et al. tracked 40,000 Italians for a mean of 14 years and found that increased consumption of plant protein sources with a high glycemic index corresponded with a 23% increase in colon cancer. Elizabeth et al. took a look into processed food consumption and future health concerns. They found there to be a beneficial outcome associated with consuming unprocessed and minimally, and minimally processed foods. However, Elizabeth et al. found a much more concerning association with consuming ultra processed foods. There was no beneficial health outcomes associated with consuming these ultra high processed foods. 
Instead, it was shown that there was an increased risk in all cause mortality with consumption of these high processed foods. Lee et al. performed a review of all meat alternatives and came to the some very concerning conclusions regarding the amount of processing that is required to manufacture plant-based protein alternatives. A direct quote, these results reveal that manufacturers of plant-based meat analogs may reduce the benefits of nutrients present in the original plant protein itself. This would mean that consumers are intaking more processed foods for less overall nutrients when consuming plant-based protein alternatives. Palatability. A final point I would like to note would be the issues with palatability that appear to be a major issue in the plant-based protein market. Saget et al., Clark and Bogdan, and Witzel et al. all mentioned consumer concerns and issues regarding the palatability of plant protein. The major issues and palatability stemming from taste and texture of these products. Lee et al. mentioned that consumers take issue with the color of plant-based protein alternatives as a reason for additional processing of such foods in order to make them more meat-like. And finally, my conclusion. In conclusion, I hope to have shed some light on the deceiving methods that can be used in research to misrepresent beef in an attempt to dethrone the favored protein source of many Americans. It is important to make sure that fair comparisons are being done in research, comparing apples to apples. And a direct quote from Lee et al. There is no doubt that livestock-based traditional meat and meat products are the best protein sources with excellent palatability and ample consumption. Thank you.